so in day to day life, everything that you observe, uh, one example being the limits of how far you can see when you look over this beautiful earth that we just discussed is the horizon that appears to be horizontal, hence the name that we chose right. to get, give right, it. Right. So that's Hold one on. of the many things. Are you saying the horizon is as far as I can see? Um, yeah, that where you can no longer see in the distance and you reach a vanishing point and it appears that's like the sky and the ground come down towards each other. No, they, you know, they yeah, don't that, because... That's not, what it, that's not what it looks like to me. Oh, you, it looks you to don't... Me, it, looks to me like, it looks to me like the ground ends and the sky's behind it. That's what it looks like to me. But you literally just said that it does look horizontal. No, he said because sure. it looks very clear. Sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, my only point here is that based on your observations, the Earth yeah. appears to be flat. No. Well, you're you're contradicting yourself, man. No, I'm not. I'm sorry you See? can't understand that, but no. So, well, you can understand why it's frustrating from my side of this these discussions when I'm literally just trying to get you to articulate I, yeah, your yeah, I, your side I, without a contradiction. I, I, get how the, can, I, sorry, I get how frustrating it can be to be confused. I get that. I, I fully understand how frustrating it is to be confused. Yeah, I'm sure, bro. I get it. You, you can relate. <laughs> but, but, like, all I'm saying, my point is simple. If you're going to attempt to refute or rebut what I'm saying, then it has to be specific to what I'm saying. And it's not even a very, like, bold, overarching claim or anything like that. It's very simple, objective, not debatable. It's just, like, a very agreeable... But I directly uh, set addressed everything you said. It's a very agreeable set of parameters that we can establish that are just objective, that um, give us some intellectual honesty yeah. to start the discussion. Yeah, That's a, yeah, yeah. it is. You've come, yeah, here it is. And, you've, come here, you've come here and told me what I see. I tell you I see something very different than what you say I see. And then you're telling me that somehow I'm... What, what, what am I doing? Watch I this, disagree watch with what... I, I disagree with your you. assumption about what I'll, I see. I'll show you. When we, like we, we, when we physically measure the Earth in small increments on its surface so that we can build or map out different areas. Um, uh -huh. do, do we assume the Earth is flat during those observations? I have no idea. Well, those measurements and observations... But, but, okay, well, but here's the point. The measurements, right, they're, they're actually built upon assuming the Earth is flat. No. No, they're not, probably. No, plane uh, survey. I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm just going to guess you're wrong. Okay, well, I'll explain why I'm not. Because plane mm -hmm. survey, yeah. So I'm talking about the plane survey data that we have. What they do is they establish a plumb line vertical to the assumed perpendicular plane. They measure in small increments to ensure accuracy, and they make these measurements and observations over different angles of the same area so they can most accurately measure the terrain. And, and during these measurements, they assume the Earth to be a topographical plane. So, so here's my problem with that, Witsit. I watched your, we'll call it a debate with the main surveyor guy, and I watched you confused on everything that he said, and I watched you not understand a single point he was making. And so you're going to have to forgive me if I'm just going to kind of ignore what you think you understand. Okay, well, I know no, you, you don't understand anything. Okay, well, you're actually talking. So it doesn't, it that doesn't make any sense for me to carry on a debate with you and argue about the facts. Fair enough. Sit down, bro, because you are talking about a debate I had with a geodetic surveyor um, where I literally knew what I was talking about because I explained his profession in no, my. You didn't. I you was, didn't know anything. I was talking, dude. So I, I explained okay. his. I explained his profession in my opener, but that was geodetic surveying, right? We're, we're actually currently discussing all observable phenomena and empirical evidence that we have accessible, including measurements of the Earth. Plane survey data establishes a plumb line, which is vertical, perpendicular uh -huh. to the yep. assumed plane. We then take yep. small increments of measurements with different angles to ensure accuracy. This is how we measure the actual Earth that we yep. use yeah, to no. traverse. No, we, don't measure, yep. we don't measure the Earth and, from and, plane. And, yeah. No, and, we and don't measure the Earth from plane. Well, where do we and, get and, all the and, dirt and, survey and, and, and data then? Survey, 
in that main survey, I guess, showed you that those plumb lines are not parallel, and you fail to understand the point. No, you're, wait, wait, you're talking about geodetic surveying. Them. You're talking about geodetic surveying again, which for the audience who may not know, yeah, his claim is that they're not parallel, even though again, when established, they're assumed to be. And this is because it's supposedly slightly angled relative to the center of mass on a globe Earth. Um, in fact, what you do in geodetic surveying, you look over vast yeah. distances, and then you take the average. Yeah. The average Google. location, the average apparent location of the yeah, actual plumb line. did it, but that's just you being confused again. Okay, because it constantly moves, and that's why you have to. That's why you have to get an average, is because it constantly moves. But the the average still shows them not parallel, and you keep failing to understand that. I don't no, know. No, I, I understand that. I understand that the average. I understand that the average of the of the apparent location isn't parallel, but. It's not expected to be parallel because it's over a vast distance of atmosphere. So for it to be exactly parallel, it would require literally no refractive effect. No, you can see, that's another thing you fail to understand. You just get that backwards. The refraction what? would make it look more curved than it does. Wait, no, okay. Listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, it would. The only I way that... that hurt you. The only way that you would expect to see exactly parallel on a flat Earth is to assume that there was no refractive effect whatsoever. No. See, this is where your inability to do simple mathematics really gets in your way of understanding anything. All right, let me break it down for now, you. If you, if you. If you actually did the math, you would see that doesn't work. I'll Which break it down for you. you won't do the math ever, will you? Do the equations. Do the math. Show me, show me something on a piece of paper that has numbers and an equal sign. Which one? That okay, would so be for the audience. Me. For the audience, do, do, do you agree that if the Earth were flat, that the plumb lines would be parallel? Which one? One second. Yes, please. they would be. Um, be guys, back, please but... stop. It. Can you please stop interrupting other dude? I'm talking to this guy. No, no because you're very wrong. Okay, well, just, just you can go next, man. Okay, so if, if he wants if, to tap if out... Flat, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if the Earth was flat and the force pulling things down was all going parallel to each other across the Earth, then yes. The plumb right, exactly. So, exactly. So, like, if the Earth were, in fact, flat, whenever you establish your local plumb, which is a vertical line you drop perpendicular to the earth right because we're measuring the earth so yep. we drop a plumb line yep. perpendicular yeah okay so perpendicular yep. to the earth mm -hmm. and it's assumed to yep. be a horizontal plane whenever established locally right now the argument for the globe is that well yeah just locally it, that that works is close enough but it's actually not that's the actual globe wait, wait, what, what? You go, go over that again what's the assumption we make the assumption that the globe Earth makes is that it's actually parallel, but not to a horizontal plane as is assumed no, no, locally. We do, we, we, do not, we do not make the assumption that it's actually parallel. Right, that's what that's I'm saying. That's what, that's what okay. I just said. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You said, well, you said the opposite of that. You said we assume no, that it's actually parallel. No, okay. I'm okay. assuming... Okay. No, I'm, yeah, okay. the globe Earth assumes that it's not actually parallel. That's just close enough for us to establish local plumb. Right, because it's actually... What is parallel... Found, what, what, what do you think we think parallel lines or parallel plumb lines have to do with establishing local plumb? Yeah, they think it's parallel ultimately, as we speak of geodetic surveying, to the center of the mass. It's parallel relative to center of mass. So it's no, not it's like... Not parallel. It, it, it's pointing at it, right? It's pointing at the center of mass. It's not parallel to it. Yeah, like two different points would be parallel to one another relative to the center of mass. Right, but on a flat yeah, earth, they'd be parallel to each other just sorry, point blank. That literally makes no sense. That yeah. literally makes no sense. Uh, how right. Be parallel yeah, you're right. They wouldn't. They, they're not. They're not. Par yeah, they're not parallel. They're at, they're actually angled out from one another. But I'm saying the two. Yes, exactly. Okay. But what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Right. But when you establish a local plumb vertical, it's assumed to be like in in line with center of mass. So like it's it's parallel. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, parallel it's when you establish it locally. Yeah. It's parallel when you establish it locally, but it's not technically parallel according to the globe. Well, parallel, parallel doesn't come into play with anything when you only have one line, right? You can't have well, one line parallel to anything. You establish it parallel to the Earth, though. No, you don't. Wait. No, so no how do we establish? So what do we establish? How do we establish local plumb then? Point, it's pointing. The vector is going directly to the center of the Earth, the center of mass, right? That's, and that's what not, I'm saying. That, that's not. That's not what the meaning of parallel is. Okay, fair enough. Semantics. So, so when your model, yeah, it is. I mean, dude, it is par parallel relative to center of mass. But yeah, I guess parallel technically. Yeah, fair enough. 
So what it's actually saying is when we drop a, um, <laughs> just to make sure we fully understand, when we establish a local plumb, we drop it vertically, assuming that it's parallel to the earth, the assumed horizontal plane. That's how we get perpendicular. That is literally how we get perpendicular, which is the first, the first step. So whenever it's yeah, on a globe yeah, Earth, we yeah, assume yeah. that when we establish that local plumb, it's actually relative to the center of mass. It isn't parallel directly to a horizontal plane that's perpendicular yeah. to it. That's the yeah. that that's is the incorrect. base. That's the base difference in the two interpretations of the data, bro. No, no, it's not. That's Specify that's how. how it's not. How so? Yeah. All, all we say is that that plumb line points to the center of mass, right? That's it. End of story. Okay. Yeah, but when you drop but, it and establish no, it locally, no, that, really, but that's the end of it. There's no more to talk about. It points. To okay, the fair. Out. We get it. Right. Okay, you don't want to. You don't want to talk about the rest of it, which is the differential well, and what but, you think but, and what I think. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hold on. No, we can. We can keep going. We got. We got to establish first that when we drop a plumb line, all we're saying is that it points to the center of mass. Correct. Right. And the difference and is that when we that, drop a on, plumb line, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, the difference is that when we drop a plumb line, we assume that it is what we assume it to be, which is perpendicular plumb line. The Earth is the Earth is perpendicular to the plumb line. That's what we assume it to be when we establish it. The difference in flat Earth and globe Earth is we assume that's literally what it is, and globe Earth assumes well, it just proceeds to be like that. The Earth is very big, and in fact, it's relative to the center of mass, slightly off of parallel relative to another position that we establish plumb at. It's just a basic difference in interpretation of the data that we have at the jump. Yes, but the question is, if we're trying to determine if it's spherical versus, or versus flat, how would we do that? And one of the ways we think we can do that is to demonstrate that the lines are not parallel. And we, and, and we assume that if we demonstrate that the lines, the different plumb lines are not indeed parallel, then the only conclusion is that we're on a sphere. No, the way that you would actually do that is you would try to find out that, you would try to isolate that hump that exists over distances, right? And, and you what would... No, 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 you, you, no, no. That's, uh, that's not what the main survey is. You asked you. me how, yeah, no, that's not what he did, but you asked me how we'd actually figure it out. What geodetic surveying does isn't how we would actually survey, figure it out. The main geodetic surveying. At one point, that the lines were not parallel. Right, our basic that's, disagreement that, that was, is that that, that, that would prove point. the, our basic disagreement is that that is a sufficient way to test if the earth is curving. Right, like uh, you yes, asked me what, exactly. what would the sufficient, yeah. you asked me what, yeah, but you asked me what why, the sufficient way to sufficient test it would be. You? You asked me what the sufficient. Why is that not sufficient? Okay, we can talk about that first, because okay, talk about be, that. because that when I look over vast distances of a flat Earth, right, and there's these plumb lines on there, I don't expect to see it exactly ninety degrees over tons of tons of atmosphere. Why not? Because you're looking through tons of atmosphere, it always at least slightly changes what you see, dude. I go make observations. That's what it does all around the Earth, everywhere, over every terrain, over bodies of water. Like, you don't see exactly what you see over vast distances because the atmosphere is there. And the closer you get to what you actually are seeing is relative to the conditions of the atmosphere. So, so you basically are saying since it's not exactly 90 degrees, the Earth's a ball, but we wouldn't expect it to be observed over vast distances as exactly 90 degrees if the Earth were flat. But the but way that you would the accurately thing, to test for what I said, that's not what the main surveyor said. He didn't it didn't say it's exactly ninety degrees. He said it's always he says always greater than ninety degrees. Okay, I mean, if you're just talking about variation from unknown, you know, random effects. You would have some measurements less than ninety degrees and some measurements greater than ninety degrees. You never, no, no, ever, that's not ever true. see measurements greater than less than ninety degrees. Never. Right, but when you when you look over vast distances of atmosphere, all you're doing is compiling what you see. So you're having to see it through layers of air, so it would perceive to yeah. be like further away from you, because you're looking through at different you layers. Have, you, you understand the concept of randomness, right? Yeah, you understand that whenever you have refraction, and you have randomness in these geodetic surveying, right? Sometimes you have outliers that are where the radius have to be like a quarter million miles you just throw those out but you would expect it to constantly fluctuate but it's going to constantly fluctuate within the parameters of looking further away from you than it truly is because of all the layers so you understand like geometry right it's going to appear to kind of tilt its backwards if you want to call it that way which is what you think it is because it actually shortens it with size change with distance so do you do you, do you agree that if you did those measurements that he did, and you got results that were greater than 90 degrees every time, 
you agree that geometry tells us that those lines are diverging from each other? With if you assume the apparent location to be an actual location, but you can't do that. Because... I'm, just, I'm talking simple geometry. But you, you know, have to that? have an actual location for geometry. Wait, what? Yeah, I know. This, this is where you want to get <laughs> what away you mean, from the, What? Like, what do you mean, what? Part. Okay, there's two things that we're doing here. Either we're measuring physical locations with geometry, or we're measuring an average of an apparent location and then well, using geometry. We're not, we're, not measuring lo we're not measuring locations at all. There's more than 180 degrees. How do you deal with that? Because when things change with size and the distance, there's angular size change relative to distance away from you, okay, as a proportionate relationship or disproportionate. So whenever you really see that, the size has a, the size has a disproportionate. Yeah, because you're not understanding. So since it changes size and the distance, you then say it's actually leaning backwards and you can't see as much of it. That's what you say. But no, we know things change size and distance. You're not even accounting for that. We and then you're saying have planes that take three right fucking ninety degree angles, man. Yeah, yeah, you're not understanding. You, you want to project I, that I'm stupid. Well, I don't but I'm i right. I understand your well, argument you and when I when I first found out about flat know, earth listen, fact. when I first found out about flat earth and I googled ten ways we know the earth's not flat. Right, or at least that's what's popped up, right? That's what's popped up. That's what it said, okay? We get it. That's what you read in the article that says, 10 ways we know the Earth's not flat. Here's a, here's a triangle. Okay, well, here's the deal, man. You're trying to claim the angles of the points using apparent locations and average within throwing out any quote-unquote outlier that doesn't fit within your presupposed window no, we of don't degree have to variance they're, they're, they're of they're degree there. of variance okay that's what the you're outliers, trying to say there are no outliers what you there are outliers dude the dude there himself are. the geodetic surveyor himself that debated me said that he had to throw out outliers dude no, no, he didn't. I know you wow. heard that, but that's not what he said. That is yeah, what he go said. Back and, go back and listen to it again. You go back and listen to it. I have. There, there was not a single measurement that was less than 180. He so said he had to throw, he had to throw so out observations because it, were, it would make the R value way too big. Nope. That's literally what he said. That's literally a mean average. Dude, why, why are you... Mackie, what the fuck, man? So my bigger point here was that based on all day-to-day -day observation, right, um, the Earth is not moving, and it appears to be flat. We, we can't see so far. Eventually, we have a horizon, which oh, is well, horizontal. Don't, 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 say don't, don't say we. Maybe you should try this, try, try this for a second. With it. When you, instead of saying we, say I. Say okay. I can't see this. And I'll I say have I tried. can't see it. Fair enough. Okay. I have tried desperately to get the people in this room to be honest enough to admit that day to day they see that the earth appears to be flat and they think it's a ball and I get it. I used to think that. But at least day to day we have to admit we don't actually see it. It's so big that we you're don't back see. To, you're back to we again. You're back to we. See how quickly that changed? Keep saying yeah, I. Because we're on What's the that? same team, my friend. No, 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 no. It's not we. It's I. Oh, we were told the you same story. You get to break out of it. I'm trying to. No, I'm trying to. Education works. I'm trying to break you guys. I'm trying to break you guys. I'm part of the uh, royal we or whatever. So there you go. Please quit playing semantics and please let the conversation progress. No, when we yeah. talked about we. I assume you mean me too. Wait, wait, let's, right, let's calm down. Let's calm down. Let's calm down. Okay. Okay. Sorry. All, all I'm saying is. talked about we. You're not talking about me. All right. Fair enough. Let me phrase it like this. Let me let me phrase it like this, man. Okay. Where I'm honestly coming from like the heartfelt place i'm coming from the honest place i'm coming from is that technically we're on the same team meaning that we were all told that the earth is this we were all told that people went to space and proved it dude we were all told that i just currently disagree with you because you think they told us the truth and i think that they lied to us and it takes a little bit more faith in your opinion no, to, to believe what i think because you're like wait what all these people are lying and i get listen, it you, but you disagree because you saw a picture that you thought was a real picture picture of the globe and you found out that it wasn't now you would think that every picture of the globe is fake
No, that's not what happened, man. What, what that happened? What, that's what you say all the time. No, when I grew up, man, and I, I would dare to say it was it was like it was like this with all of you guys too. When we were growing up, we just assumed we that the Earth was a ball. Never in our mind did we actually seriously entertain that You're the Earth could be. Stop talking about us. You don't know me. You have can no I, idea yeah, what I've done. Can I, all this okay, you I'm, I'm in the way, well, you I'm in the way dude. You I'm in the way. What I believe. I'm not gonna, okay, no, okay, literally. No, okay, of course it's not going to be but, literally everybody, right? But I'm just talking about generally. Then stop talking like that. Okay, generally, we were like. There's no way the Earth's a ball. I mean, not a ball. Like, we never even thought about it. We, we just, assume, like, we know. No, I've thought about it lots of times. You're just wrong. Okay, well, fair about enough. You're, times. Fair enough, man. You're an anomaly. Maybe it's because I was challenged and I was just so far behind that I didn't think about it. Because whenever I, okay, fair maybe, enough. That's what maybe. you think. So whenever I was growing up, dude, I just assumed we knew the Earth was a ball. Like, never in my mind did I think like it may not be a ball. You know, like uh-huh. they did. I and, knew and, it was a ball, and in fact, and I just what? didn't. I didn't really care too much because yeah. I was and playing like a hard. And then, because, and then what? Oh, because I thought, I, the iPhone, I thought the iPhone picture was a real picture. And it turned out you are scared to hear my testimony, bro. This is weird. And then, oh, so that's not a real picture. That means every picture is fake. Uh, can I, all right, so when I was growing up, I thought I knew for sure that the Earth. Like, I never even thought that it was a legitimate question to pose to one that okay. the Earth was in the wall. Okay, and so, but yep. I was just busy playing. Ball. I was just busy playing ball, so I didn't really care too yep. much, you know. And I just like, oh, you, you were too much. The to only stop, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I had, I had, I had a good GPA. I was just making a joke. Calm down. Like all I'm saying is, like, I didn't really oh, ever. I, when they showed me the flat Earth, like it was just in passing as a joke. Like people oh, used to they? the textbooks. It the showed you that showed people. Yeah, people used to. It shows you that people used to think the Earth was flat, but then it shows you like a boat going off the edge with the water spilling off of it. And I was like, "Dumbasses!" And then we just moved on in class. <laughs> and then uh, they they told us what it is. They told us start telling us what about space. Did you go to? And then, Texas? but you guys yeah. still believe that. <laughs> Yeah, and then we had to learn like the planets. Our immediate thing we had to learn. Well, it wasn't like the dimensions or anything like that. It it was uh we had to learn about the planets, and we had to learn about our solar system and know it and know what each one had, like the characteristics each one had in relationship to one another and stuff like that. And I went to a private school that was college preparatory, so this this is considered good education in the United States. Oh, no, it never stops. I'm out thinking the fucking Earth was flat. How is that a good education, bro? That's oh no, I, I, they didn't teach me the Earth was flat. You're not listening. They told me the opposite. Which, which I would like. Which I would. You guys like, are scared of hearing my like genuine 100 percent recollection of what happened when I grew up. How weird is that? Nobody's scared. Nobody's scared. <laughs> it's weird I'm, I'm that you're getting scared. triggered about my honest no, recollection of what happened to me. <laughs> then why are you interrupting and attacking me? Well, nobody's the thing scared. is, uh, Mr. Mackey is. Uh, what was that? So hey, Whitsit, could I relate to you my experience? Sure. Right. In my experience, I personally saw with my own telescope the uh, moons of Jupiter and the rings of Saturn. In high school, we literally reconstructed the orbit of the Earth from Kepler's original data. So no, I nice. wasn't. So I wasn't handed the globe Earth model or the heliocentric model. We we proved it ourselves in science class. Nice, nice. Um, I got a little bit of that. Like when I was originally introduced to the globe Earth, it wasn't like that. Like they just told us what it is. But in high school, yeah, like in physics honors and stuff like that, we would talk about all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, we would talk about the planetary yeah. movement of the physics bodies honors, too. Right? That that. Yeah. that, that we didn't talk. We we did calculations directly from. Physics. Yeah, of course. Yeah, physics. Yeah, yeah, physics has tons of calculations. So, What's well, talk? okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And actually, I've looked at I've looked at those two. They're pretty, man. You were they personally. Are, have, I personally have yes. the rings of Saturn. I'd love to see your report Jupiter, card. The craters. Oh, I said I had an A in all of them, man. Calm down. Uh, well, so, well, I don't. Calm my down experience about what, but your is not what you say it is. Physics honors is how it was titled in the college preparatory school, man. No, no, I mean, yeah, it's kind of lame. I agree. What's your point? Well, it's not an honors class. It was, it was an honors class. class. That's why it was called that in the college preparatory school. 
Why are we what talking happened? about my schooling? I'm just tell, I'm telling you guys what we were. Something went terribly wrong in your schooling. Okay, yeah, and like I could just like breeze through you in chemistry honors papers, like it was literally not no, even a thing, and I used to get accused of cheating. I used to get accused of cheating, no but but automatically you know for a fact I must be stupid or lying because there has to be a ball. You can breeze what through us on, on chemistry honors, can you? Yeah, I'm saying when I was in chemistry honors, I would have to like look at it for a second and refresh my memory. Right, talk to me about shell orbitals. Talk to I just I <laughs> talk to you about talk to you about shell orbitals. Well, like, why would you why yeah. would you want to hear me talk to you about stuff if I'm stupid? Just show me that you're informed. Okay, you. I'll show you any uh, physical materialistic claim on a subatomic scale. Now that I know this as an adult, that's 29, and not still blindly believing when I was taught in high school, is actually unverified. It's never been isolated, never been manipulated, never actually been proven Did to be a physical that? material. Yeah, because you guys should listen, man. Here's the deal. I was just trying to I was trying to connect to you guys. I was trying to connect to you guys on like a heartfelt level. And you guys like can't feel it. You guys just don't have it in you. You always say you're saying the same thing you always say. Because I'm being forced into to like this like this real quick debate. I'm gonna ask Austin every question I can think of. And it's like, no, all I'm trying to say is technically the whole point was that he was he took contention with me saying the pronoun we. And I was like, dude, I I'm just saying that because how I honestly feel is that we were all told the same story. Fair enough, we, we disagree now right now. Are. Fair enough, we disagree right now. But I was just explaining that when that's I was not, younger. That's not what we're saying. That's what I'm saying. I know, and you're being annoying. By I'm, I'm saying we, we, we definitely all agreed not too long ago that the earth was a ball. I, I agree with you guys that the earth was a ball. You might have had, agreed on the surface level, but... And then you had some kind of head trauma now? or something. I'm not sure what it's Well, like. actually, I never agreed on the surface level because I never agreed to the claim based on what the surface shows us. Like, they didn't teach us like that. They didn't even really teach the dimensions too much. They just taught about space and the solar system. With okay, like, you, you only have a surface, a very uh, basic understanding yeah. of things, and you can't say you agreed on the deeper levels of stuff that you never knew understood oh, they were teaching us the deeper levels of stuff that's the whole point you guys sound exactly like a christian talking to like somebody who used to be a christian and is now an i atheist. just wanted i wanted what's it to tell me about shell orbitals and he didn't do it tell me about the differences between no time out <laughs> brenda brenda to be fair you you know that like i i don't actually work for you or anything I'm trying to level with you guys. I'm trying to have. I know that we you we certainly disagree on the nature of the Earth. We we 100 disagree, and like we do it all the time. We debate. It gets worked up. Like I end up even retaliating, interrupting, and I even look like a jackass, right? So like I, I'm trying to have a more cordial conversation. We can have conversations outside of like the polarization of like, no, my model's real. I'm gonna fight you, right? Like we we can just be respectful. I, I'm trying to relate to you guys until yes. but a few years ago, I was still on your team in the sense of. Of what the earth is i i 100 believed what you guys do that's all i'm saying like i was just explaining from my perspective i never thought it was a valid thing to even question it. i thought that was retarded dude. that's all i'm saying we said listen, if you want your perspective man you promised us you were going to show me how to look at the ranty photo from another perspective i'm not trying to be a smart ass no i got you bro i got you bro like we're, i want to debate him on a bigger channel and i'm gonna show it to everybody like that's the only reason i'm not gonna like go do the math and bring it back here I already have done that. No, gonna, that no it wasn't a big channel. They put me on the small channel on purpose because they were afraid. They'd know what to expect. And truth is, I didn't even bring a presentation, and he got wrecked. So, like, and I know you guys think I got wrecked, but it's whatever. It's whatever. Wait till the presentation comes. Put me on the big channel. If Flatter's stupid, why are you scared to put Austin on the biggest channel? We got 400,000 subs of Simon Dan who's amping all this up and in my chat and cheering it on. Why don't you just host it? What's it? Big what? platform. What's it? What's it? What what evidence did, and numbers and calculations did you bring? And are you uh, Ranty challenged you to do oh. some actual uh, calculations? Are you doing that? I will whenever we agree on a debate. Yeah, I've already looked through the numbers though. You did. I got all yeah. the numbers. I got them. Yeah, I'm the numbers. The numbers don't help you guys. They hurt you guys. No. Well, you haven't. You haven't shown nope. that. The numbers hurt you guys. I'm just letting you know. So why don't you guys do the numbers? Why don't you guys do the numbers? I'll do the numbers. I can't wait. <laughs> we have. You've done the actual accurate numbers? Let's see them. I got the miles, distance, feet, height. Wait. Oh, so I've already seen your numbers, and you haven't done the numbers that we're discussing. It covers all of the numbers. 
Yeah, what? Is, the ones that we, is it the ones that you brought up, Don Gio? Haven't we been looking at them all day? Yep, I've been at it all Isn't day, it? yes. Oh, you know you know about those numbers, Scott? Like, like what? what's up with that? Really hey, before we get into the uh, minutia of the quantification, can, can I just ask you guys, you do agree, and I'm not, I'm not saying we shouldn't talk about it, we can talk about it. Uh, you agree that math alone doesn't prove things, right? It's our, it's the most accurate way we have as humans to convey like specificity as to how does something works, and to try to quantify and make it replicatable. It's very useful. It's incredible. It's like basically the top tier of achievement when it comes to technology, technology, and like how we actually have use cases for things in the world. But it doesn't actually prove that what you think is happening once you uh, quantify the effects is actually happening. We have to challenge the mathematical uh, notion that your level line will perfectly split the scene into a top and bottom half that will be perfectly preserved. If you're close to a flat surface, that's not going to happen. Your level line will disappear, and after a while, you're going to be siding to a taller zone, uh, even though you're still level. So uh, we we're, have a couple of notions that are a little off. Nothing works that way. I think I think the right way to think about math is, is that math is a language. It's a formal language. And so like any language, it can be used to express things. And you can Agreed. express arguments. And you express, hold on, let me finish. You can express arguments that are true with math. The beautiful thing about math is if you follow the rules, if you're formal about it, you have very high confidence that the conclusions you get to are going to be true, assuming that your assumptions or beginning statements are true. And that way you can get very complicated statements that you know are right as long as you followed all the rules. That's how right. people use it, and it can be as, you know, you can use it to prove an argument or to ma make evidence or to make a case as well as anything. You can also misuse it. You can be fallacious about it. You can make errors. But um, in that respect, it's as powerful or not as powerful as any other method. Of oh, perspective. Well, nice, dude. I, I, I interrupted you accidentally just, just to say agree so that I could agree where we did, assuming that we wouldn't at the end. But for the most part, I pretty much do agree with what you said. Because it's true, and, and yeah, it's very useful, and we quantify things. And you said the kicker, bro. You said working upon those assumptions, assuming that those assumptions are true. So I agree with that. I mean, I have no issue with math, and, and I naturally liked it. I, I, I enjoyed it, but I also know now that it doesn't, it doesn't prove a cause. Like, it's our most efficient way to describe an effect, you know, and it's a, a language, like you said, it's, it's self, it's basically self, well, we won't say fulfilling, but it is malleable, right? And so it is subject to the inter. I think that's a great point, Wits. It's but not malleable because you, if, if you don't, if you misuse it, it's, it's always, there's always a forensic trail for you. So you, if you misuse it, it it's obvious. So you can't, it's not up to interpretation per se, but you can misuse it. You can make a mistake that might be subtle and someone else would have to point it out to you. You have to find it. But um, it'll be there. And so in that sense, everyone can know, if, if everyone agrees that they've studied it and it's all correct, then everyone can have confidence that the conclusions were true, assuming that the assumptions are true. And the assumptions can be pretty lightweight. Like, they can be as little as just piano's assumptions, um, you know, just the basic things like after one, there comes two and stuff like that. Well, you got to start with the right assumptions. And with perspective, there's some really weird global assumptions about perspective that won't work over yeah, a flat yeah. plane. Now, ideally, if there's no flat plane in the way, you'd have infinite crushing into the vanishing point from all sides. You could have yeah, 10 feet of um, uh, visual information that can crush into the um, vanishing point from all sides, 10 from the top, bottom, uh, and left and right. But if you're only six feet off the ground, you're only going to get six foot of crushing into the vanishing point at the level of the eyes with infinite crushing, top, left, and right, which is yeah, going to yeah, give yeah. you a plane, a flat uh, horizon, and the object is going to be crushed and set early because of the flat surface that is limiting the amount of crushing from the bottom up into that. Do, do, do your assumptions hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get a question. What's it? What's it? If math doesn't prove stuff, what does? Uh, science. And what does science use to prove things if it's not math? Uh, well, what sci in science, what we do is we see this like phenomena that keeps happening, and we attempt to figure out what causes that to happen. All right? It's just the, uh, Wait, the how motion. How do we do that without math? It's effectively life's motion of discovery, right? And how do so, we do that without math? Life's 
motion of the screen. We proved stuff. Yeah, write that down. <laughs> math is just a way to be consistent and they account for all the units. But with perspective, if your units are disappearing, then it becomes increasingly impossible math. to be pro uh, um, consistent and prove anything with math. So you need consistency for proof. What are you talking about, guys? So if you know what a motion of discovery is, then you would understand the weightiness and life's motion of discovery. But I get it. You guys are just ready to clown. Like pounce and pretend I'm, I'm, I'm dumb, I'm, but I'm, I'm, hey, anyway, wait for what proves something without that. Right. So, what what's the difference in math? Doesn't. Well, that Name progressed into that proves something if math doesn't. Should we be? I uh, said science, and then that progressed into you saying, "How do you use science without math?" Exactly. So math. Okay. Yeah. So we use math to quantify it. No, it's not based on math. It it's is. a it's a tool used within science. So, like, what we do is we quantify the effects so we can replicate the observation, demonstration, experiment. We have to quantify it so we know that we can accurately keep up with what happens and what we're making happen. Um, for example, it's very difficult math, to have math, a control. Math. Yeah, absolutely. It's so very math. difficult. It's very difficult to have a control variable without math, right? It, so you know, it's impossible. Okay. Yeah, so not really impossible, but it's impossible to quantify the effects. So my point I is, have to control there about a number. Numbers are my math. point is that science and math are actually not the same thing. That's why they have different names. So one of them is science, and one of them is math. Yes, I know. Now, science cannot exist without math. Oh yeah, it's not true. So math the, is the fundamentals of everything. No, no, because science is where you have a naturally occurring observable phenomenon. You see something so happening you all didn't the time. Do math and chemi chemistry and you it. measure it with numbers. Okay, calm down. You, you, you always add and subtract with numbers. Not yet. Not science. yet. This is it's the it's math. it's it's a it's a rudimentary layout of our actual thought process when we observe things in the world. When people are trying to truly discover things because they're open minded and thirsty for knowledge, not when they want to regurgitate what they were told someone else came up with theoretically as the best we have now. And when you look out at the world, you see an observable yeah, phenomena. So confused. Okay, so your dependent variable is your observable phenomena, and then. You can actually propose a hypothesis, a cause and effect relationship. So a cause of that observable phenomena, your dependent variable, your effect, you propose a cause of it, okay? Say, I'm pretty sure that this is what's causing that effect. Then what you do to test your hypothesis is you try to manipulate that cause. Whatever you claim was the cause of the effect that you saw, you manipulate it, you change it, you vary it, you make it not to be the same input that it previously was, and then it'll actually verify this does in fact, and this does in fact, Sorry, I keep falling off. Push the talk. What's electromagnetic wake? It's, it's just gibberish that um, Nathan brought in. So, so you're now asking me a random question because you can't respond to my point. Well, here's the problem with the point is that... Um, well, no, you're here. Even if, so even if we restricted science question. to what you said right there, even if we did restrict it, and I don't think you did a fully comprehensive uh, description of science, but let's say it is restricted to that. You still are going to have to use math, even in what you're just describing, because it, you got to remember, like even the most basic, most rudimentary science is going to use rudimentary math like arithmetic. You know, you can't do yeah, yeah math is you can't do quantification as you say unless you're going to do counting. If you're not even counting, right? If you're doing counting, you're doing math. Yeah, so I agree with you. All kind of part and parcel of the same thing. They're they're like it's almost two sides of the same coin in a way. Yeah, I want to say I'm not coming at... if there's a regular interaction. If the interaction is not regular enough, then the math is useless. At best, you'd have a general prediction, but math needs a, a regular interaction that can be quantified. That's not always possible in science. I'm not yeah, sure what you mean by that. It doesn't need that. I will say I, I do come at I come at you sideways sometimes, Scott. But I will have to tip my hat in the sense that you are um, intelligent enough to tactically maneuver uh, dialogue. You know, I'll give you that for sure. And like, I see what you're saying. Like, I I haven't disagreed with any of your last statements except for like you always put a cherry on top of them. That's subjective, right? But like, math is very useful. It, like, dude, science would be such a headache without math because it helps us get precise. It helps us increase accuracy. It helps us like increase rep like the ability of replication. It's very it's very so dominating the mic saying true and fair things with it that I'd have to agree is pretty pretty no, good point. I, 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 which is that I you got it wrong. Is. Science can't prove anything, and math is the only field in which you can. I mean it, I'm it. I mean it though. Yeah, well, dude, wait, 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 guys. Sci science can prove something. Like it, it, it can prove a cause and effect relationship. It just no, you know it the can't. no, it can't. 
Why not? But math can only prove something if all of the units are preserved, so math has limits. Math can count out a bushel of apples as long as all 50 of those apples in a bushel of 50 apples still exist and are still quantifiable. That's impossible with perspective where the visual units are converging, merging, and disappearing. So math's limits need to be acknowledged, otherwise you're going to run circles trying to find an answer with the wrong tools. Yeah, like if you, if you, if you claim that the wind causes the leaf to move, and then you block some of the wind, you build a wall, and the wind doesn't make the leaf move. Like you've proven that the wind has a relationship has a relationship Why with the movement. You haven't proven it. Listen, Why you've proven you you've proven that when you remove the variable of the wind, it the leaves aren't moving like they were. Oh, you so you've simply given an explanation to you know uh, to the best you've given an Right, right. So it's it's, it's like a process. It's not proof, it's a, though. That's not it's a proof. process because you keep going through it. Like because wind has numerous characteristics, like, like just saying the IV is wind. Well, there's temperature variance and fluctuation within and transfer of heat and how that will affect the movement of the wind that then affects the movement of the leaf. There's numerous thing, things within that IV. But you do know for sure that if you actually remove that IV, if you manipulate it, you vary it, you, you remove it that the effect no longer happens. So that's a starting point for us. That's where we know that we can start with what we know. Richard, why is there no science for flat Earth? Nothing quantifiable, tangible. I want to know what electromagnetic wake is. The only problem is that you said science and there's nothing quantifiable. Again, we just discussed that those aren't the same thing, but oftentimes we do, in fact, rely upon quantification to get more precise. Why is there no science for the flat Earth? Like the, literally, it's it's dependent. It's dependent and built upon all science, meaning that whenever we manip whatever we can personally manipulate, like we just discussed, it's independent variable you have to manipulate it. Anything that we can personally manipulate in the real world, it only works with flat Earth. Like whenever you manipulate gas pressure or uh, pressure, yeah. So it, you can only make a demonstration that coincides with a flat Earth having a containment. Right, like whenever, whenever you manipulate water, you can only manipulate it so that you can show that it would ex exist, you know, in balance on a flat Earth. So it's that built upon soul. It's solely built upon what we can prove as science. That's the whole point. You don't have a flat Earth science, though. No. Yeah, we do. Like fluid statics is a flat Earth science. No, what is it? How is it not? It has nothing, fluid, to, do with has nothing to do with the flat Earth. You, you guys might try to adopt fluid statics as what you think is flat earth science, but it is not flat earth science. Not well, the reason it has to do with the earth is because there's water on the earth. Oh, good job. Yeah. <laughs> That's not points. So, dude, so that... you're saying that if water followed the level line around the curve of the earth, that's flat earth science? Uh, wait, when you make up fairy tales about what water never does, my that's point was do. that. No, my point was that specifically, if you just limit yourself to empirical evidence uh, according to the scientific method and scientific experiment, it's where you manipulate an independent variable. You actually have the cause, and you manipulate it. You eliminate it, vary it, manipulate it. That's how you actually verify that it's the cause. When we do that with fluid stacks, with water, right, we can manipulate it in numerous different ways. We can make it go different ways. We can actually submit it to different frequencies. It'll change molecular structure. We can do all kinds of things with water. We can actually introduce electrostatics, and it will move. Okay, well, what we know about water for sure and fluid statics is that it will conform to its container and that it will find its level. So these yeah, are things that we, the, the level, no, the water isn't sentient. We can, okay. no, we can say it even more generally than that. We can say water will no, conform no. to forces that are present, right? That's yep. the container is an example of that. There are other examples of that too. Though. posted earlier, water is a square, square water, the uh, surface tension or whatever y'all said with it's crazy, man. I, I don't know which way it goes, but it's like blowing this container thing. Just no, dude. It's not. Uh, no. It's, it's, but yeah. I think the truth is the truth is as the as with everything in the universe, water will conform to the forces that are present and acting on it. You don't so, sound too confident. Like if you have a home run globe Earth proof, I'd love to see it. Tone of voice that he always run. talks in, you asshole. Are you a home run Why are you screaming, man? Because you're a fucking idiot, and you try to psychoanalyze everything, every word that comes out of every person's mouth. No, I don't even, I'm not wrong. even trying to specify individuals. Yeah, let's not try to be calm. The thing is, 
the thing is we're talking about science that's based off the flat earth what science is based off the globe earth i mean if you're talking about astronomy it's geocentric right, if not right. flat so and at best you have a, a curved dome of the no sky way. but the, the surface of the earth doesn't need to be curved to give you your um astronomy and your stellarium constellations all you need to have is a dome of god pointless direction the argue over who gets to label it flat earth or global earth science is dumb it's just science okay guys let's just just keep talking about science and we'll talk about what i agree the answer is it doesn't matter who owns it like i agree I agree. So, and but actually, but and it's an argument. This, but this point that I just made, though, I do think is important with it because I do think it somehow it really gets to the heart of the difference between how we look at water. And and I think that you will agree. I mean, you should agree with us. I don't understand why you don't. When I say that water doesn't um, just conform to the container that it's in, it conforms to forces that are present. And a container is an example of forces, you know, kinetic forces. But it's not the only example of forces. And if you have other forces acting on water, it's going to conform to those forces. And so then it becomes a question of well, what are the forces acting on water? Because if you believe the forces that are present in the world, like we do, if you, if you think we're right about what we say, all the forces acting on water, you are going to get the behavior that we see. say we see. You're going to get a curved surface, a level that is, you know, spherical. That's what you're going to get if you if you believe all the forces exist. And of course, but the only problem with happen. that is the only force you can use to try to replicate or demonstrate it is magnetism, right? Like, you, like that's yeah, Gravity that's. Forms. No, you don't. You don't replicate gravity making water bend around a ball or containing relative to gravity. You, you, that's impossible. You can use like a very strong magnetic field and try to have temporal containment relative to the introduction of the energy and the movement in, like the movement of the field of magnetism. But you can never ever demonstrate like containment derivative or deriving from gravity. I think I'll, we don't necessarily need to do that. What we need to do is show well, that the forces exist well, and the forces um, cause the objects, the materials to be conformed to based on how they're um, how they're being you, how they're hitting them. So, do you agree it has to be magnetism? No, no. I, I just think, for example, you can, we can we can establish the truth of gravity is a thing. Okay, and once we have that, then we can establish the truth of that the first law of motion is true. Once we have those two things, it follows out automatically that water is going to behave the way that we say it does. Automatically, so you agree that you can't make this claim about a force conforming water to the exterior of a convex object without supporting the fact that gravity is real. First, you, you I mean, if to, gravity wasn't real, let's say gravity was a complete fiction. Well, then we will, you know, then I'm not sure what we're saying. Then obviously, we you have to you have to believe and establish and show gravity as a force is a real thing, right? You, it's not believe, establish, and show it as a real thing, it's just believe it's just believe you just have to we have to believe we have to believe and assume gravity to be a real thing to even go into the theoretics it's okay i'll still no but you can also show it and you can have evidence for it. you can establish it you can all, i mean you, you certainly do believe it once it's been shown to you like with any evidence right you're gonna it's gonna cause you to either believe or disbelieve something yeah but I, I like this thing i have the truth on my side so i don't care to you go you really don't though and I don't care to go with you into the yeah, extra steps. I'm making. Yeah. I'm trying to break it down to you. That actually requires a fundamental, you know, assumption exactly. that's not verifiable. And you no, admitted you verify that. We have well, yeah, all right. You think you verified it? Strong. Just trying well, to break it down so your yeah. dumbass can understand it, Scott. Well, the problem, <laughs> Scott, is that's not the know? logic chain that leads you to a, a ball, which is what we're talking about in this discussion. You assume that gravity is a force, number one, that can curve, number two, and number three, it pulls things into a ball shapes. That is the actual um, etymology um, or uh, epistemology of this gravity claim, and none of it is justified. We don't see gravity curving anything. Unjustified epistemology epistemological claims to back up this ball as soon as you say none of this justified that's when you start spinning into you're just making stuff up stuff. well what i'm trying to figure out is what's the force that's making water bend convexly and here to the exterior oh, of us guys 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 calm down it's what gravity. what's the, what's the force that we can demonstrate Wait. will require Wait. gravity what's the weight that we can demonstrate that will well, we have a lot of ways to demonstrate the existence of gravity, a lot of different ways. And wait, 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 wait. Let's let me finish my point. My question is, what's the demonstration we can use to show that water will bend convexly adhering to the exterior of a spinning spherical well, we a spinning spherical object? We just have to establish the existence of gravity and uh, have it work the way we say it does. Remember that really gravity falls out of a, a fundamental law of, of science. It falls out of the first law of motion. With the first law of motion, all we really have to do is look around the world and observe for a while, and we're going to realize that gravity has got to be there. 
Because the first well, one, uh, but that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, what's the demonstration that we can replicate ourselves that shows that we don't gravity need to replicate will? It. We don't gravity, gravity. Gra you this. cannot finish speaking. You want us man. to replicate a planet? That's not fucking possible on the normal human okay, scale. Okay, so you Let's agree that it's in, you agree that it's impossible well, on so the human you, scale. It's on the human scale. You can't fucking replicate gravity like you want us to you can replicate gravitational effects like mass is attracting mass which is what we say gravity is but you don't need to replicate water sticking to a ball that's just a ridiculous a, straw man so that you guys used to try to get out of the fact that gravity no, is. we have to trust what you say despite the fact that there's no small scale demonstration what were you saying yeah, that's what it's like. You, you, you said you wanted uh, the idea that we have to replicate a planet is a mistake. I think that's the that's what he's really trying to say. No, no, no. I'll, I'll take a small scale demonstration. Okay, here we go. I've got one right now. I'm going to post it Yay. right now. It's a uh, small scale demonstration of a spinning spherical object holding water. Boom. That's perfect. What does it use well, to hold the water I, to the spherical object? I, I do think one one thing that I should keep in that is important to keep in factor. Y'all are getting nervous right now. Water, no, I'm, I'm getting I nervous. Have, I have a, stop interrupting. I me specifically, I have a speech impediment, so I stutter a little bit every now and again. It's not no, 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 sorry, I'm sorry. Just, I wasn't talking about you, bro. Oh, okay, yeah. So one thing that I think is important when talking about gravitational forces and whether or not proving it is or not in relation to water is that I think we should look towards like uh, the tides of how the ocean works because to, you have to keep in mind the, the tides on how specifically the tides in, in, are in completely in conjunction with the moon, and based upon that, the water is going to shift a direction, or rather flow a direction, or be at a certain direct point, depending on where the moon is. So I think that is one key factor in determining whether or not gravity is a factor here. Unfortunately, we assumed that, and you are right, my friend, that that is, in fact, a logical premise. It's that if gravity is, in fact, the cause of water being convexly inherent to the exterior of a spinning object in a vacuum, then the mass of the moon will actually affect the water itself. Um, and yeah. that is, of course, in a way what we claim. We claim, uh, when I say we, the heliocentric model claims tidal locking and that the moon is locked with the earth and spinning at the perfect rotational rate that we only see half of it. Um, and that this affects the tides. We, we the don't problem, see half of the moon. The problem with it is you cannot we apply... Like, see half of the moon. The problem with it is you cannot apply like a basic gravitational relationship to the moon and the earth because on the opposite side of the moon, on the globe earth model, there are tides with the same magnitude in the opposite direction. So as a direct proportionate relationship of a gravitational body next to another, it doesn't work in that way. It, it's you, a much more you complex... You that you don't understand how gravity works. What's it? Not gra yeah, 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 I know how gravity works. <laughs> are you, the words you, that came out of your mouth were wrong... So, if you understand how gravity works, you wouldn't say wrong things about gravity. Well, then just specify what I said that was wrong, then, bro. You said the tidal forces on the opposite side of the moon are opposite the tidal forces on the near side of the moon. That's not what I that said. That is false. That's not you what I said. You did fucking say that. No, let, me, let, me, let me repeat what I said, okay? What I said was that assuming that the gravitational relationship between the moon and the earth is the causal agent of the tidal waves, is the cause of the tidal, age, tidal waves, that doesn't really add up with a directly proportionate relationship of gravity between two masses because on the opposite side of the Earth, where the moon is not, we have tides of the same magnitude that are going in the opposite direction. What happens when yeah. you take a water balloon and you stretch it? What shape does it make? Wow, that's your response? Well, I, well you grab a I water balloon know, from what, with that, one hand and then... Well, that is you grab a water balloon, and you hold it steady with one hand, and then you stretch it with the other hand. What shape does that make? Uh, it depends on how far you go, but it'd be like, it'd be like an oval. It's a spheroid. It yeah. Makes yeah. So, the shape that the water makes yeah, the and, moon pulls on it. Okay, yeah, so, and we, and we, so, so, so what you're saying is that the moon's gravity actually makes the Earth an oval. No. No, it's, we're talking about how the tides work specifically. The, the tides, so if the Earth was a 100% perfect water ball, or just floating around in space, like the, it's a rock in the center of a wall, and the moon still existed there, it would, the surface of the of Earth itself would be similar to that of a water balloon, but because we have land masses on the lake that are, that are peeking out of it, it doesn't... Yeah, the problem is though, when we take that water balloon and we pull it from one side, it doesn't distribute evenly on both sides to make an oval. It favors the side that's pulling it. But, but that still doesn't. Yeah, it does because on the globe Earth, man. On the globe Earth, 
I was just saying that it doesn't. I was just gonna say that doesn't actually adhere to the point that was being made, and that it still makes an oval shaped. Right, you're, right. You're but my point is, my point is for that to rebut the same on both sides of the Earth is wrong. It is yeah, my true. point. Yeah, it is. There, there look, are times. Look at the diagram that Earth is Life just posted. See how there's high high tide and low high tide. Low high tide is lower than the high high tide. Right. So, so, so what have, you said was wrong. If you just show me a cartoon and you just believe it to be true. The truth is well, that we you have. You want a fucking well, diagram well, of? Can I explain well, it, or are you going to keep interrupting, man? Well, we use well in science the way we use cartoons. The reason why you see a lot of cartoon-based uh, uh, diagrams of stuff like this is because it's easier for our minds to digest than have like actual numbers with grids everywhere. Right, and if it was scientifically validated, that that would be one thing. But what my point is is that we actually have recordings that show ties that are very high on the opposite side of the moon. And see, this is what you would have to do if you want to the really test the, the moon. If you really want to test the veracity of these claims, you would have to go and figure that out. Most people just look at this diagram and assume that it has all the science backing it. In addition to that, they claim that based on this tidal walking relationship, right, that we only see like one half of the moon forever for all recordable history. That's not true. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. And that we're one half of the moon. So all of diagrams no, that explain how tides work, are they all incorrect? Yeah, so when you show them so a diagram that's really call. simplified, they complain it's a cartoon. No, no, all I'm saying mm. is this isn't true. This diagram isn't true. Are you understanding? Yeah. So, so every call. diagram you have, you have to make it an even simpler cartoon. No, what so I need you to do is back your dumbass cartoon up with some actual data. <laughs> every that, would, diagram that would be title charts. Okay, so the title charts show that there are no tides. <laughs> I've already looked at this. It's so funny that there are no tides with a uh, similar magnitude or even greater magnitude on the opposite side of the moon ever. So, so your claim, your claim uh -oh, is that they're all We tides, got right? to the heart of this. Austin looked we're, this up three years ago. You're saying you tides on the moon again. It's wrong. how wrong you are. It's kind of ridiculous. It's you funny that you guys on. haven't looked into it, and I looked into this years ago. It's funny that you looked into it years ago, and you're, you're still wrong years later. No, it was my lot. My see, this is what happened. This is the difference. I logically thought about the story, and I thought and about you what drew. So, so what's the, are you basically saying your logic is not that, that that we don't understand gravity, and that no, no, therefore no. he knows no, you understand. And therefore, that orbital mechanics the doesn't world, work. Right? Saying? Saying? Orbital mechanics no. doesn't work because there's no, no. Such thing as gravity, right? Mm, well, orbital mechanics work, but it's quantum locking, uh, magnetic levitation. Everything is intrinsically magnetic. Okay, everything is intrinsically so why magnetic. Is it, why is it when they use the gravitational But here's the problem, example, to project, though. To project, to project to like comets, charts. right? The arrival of the comets, the when they're going to be at their brightest, when they're going to be in what part of the sky, when they're going to be at their brightest, like they did with Neowise. How does that work? Yeah, the sky is beautiful. It has a cyclical nature, and then the lights There's in the sky. There's nothing cyclical happen. about a comet. Neowise was the only comet of its type ever, and there will never be another one ever again. And that'll have, that'll follow that path. Oh, you're always coming off, man. So, like, the sky is beautiful. It has a cyclical nature. We have phenomena within the sky. It appears that we're in an electrical field. We have what appear to be electrical discharges if you were able to actually quantify and keep up with the earth which by the way the elite do guys that's why they lie to the you elite lying then, again. the illuminati mason free so, so but which, so then they would much? know that the earth is effectively a battery and then it has a cycle of discharge oh, what they told you guys that you're a tiny speck of dust as a rock that suits through ever ex it? expanding infinite nothingness the earth is special guys the earth is special bro it, why, like, you, like, why are you afraid a of reality? A creator that it? loves you made the earth. And, and like, I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't make you. I didn't, dude, guys, listen. Guys, listen. I didn't do that. I didn't make the lie. I didn't tell you guys to lie. I come yes, here and take, I come here, I come here and take many bullets daily when I jump on here, and everyone knows it. To you're tell you guys. Bullshit. You're talking pure bullets. So here, here's the facts of the matter. Here's the facts of the matter. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. There is an existence that extends beyond your material life, your material physical vessel. They don't want you to know that. You may not think that's the case. That's fair enough. 
I'm telling let's you for the people comments. that have let's ears not to get hear. Off the train. Let's, let's no, not get dude, off the no. Road. I want you to hear this. You have a spirit. You have a soul. They don't want you to know that. They know that they have one, but they connect <laughs> theirs, <laughs> and they don't. And they detach you from you. I want you to understand. Almost done. I'm almost done. And I agree that it sounds crazy. I agree that it sounds crazy. I thought it used to sound crazy. I posted a title chart. Can I just finish? Can I just finish? And try to work long. Oh, we can talk about whatever you want to believe in your little religion in just a second. I'm trying to make a point. All right, uh, look, I used to say, yeah, there's 4,200 religions, and yours is the right one. What a cool story, bro. There's 4,200 religions, and yours is the right one. But, hey, listen, can I, can I just say something? You can feel the vibration of the heartfelt nature of what I'm saying increase, and you get nervous. You get nervous based on my vibration through the microphone through the internet, dude. Think about how weird that is, because I'm being real. I'm being real, bro. And no, you're, you're being you're being grilled because you're talking pure bollocks, Switzer. You won't even let me finish what I'm saying. You have 160 bro. IQ supposedly, and you stock bollocks. Minimally, so get minimally. Fuck, so here's the deal, dude. I'm saying what I know to be true. Okay, no, you, like you're you not, know you're shit, not. Switzer. Listen, you're not insignificant. You're not insignificant. Listen, you don't know shit. Sorry. I get that the world sucks, and they and they they, they listen. Listen, I get the world sucks and marginalize no, you, with and with you have to like earn. You have to earn your way in the world. You have to prove. Shit, you, play, said you, you just can't say shit. Wrong, you have to like, wrong. listen, listen. You have to like earn your way in this world, right? Listen, you have to earn your way in this world. You have to prove yourself. You have to like prove your validity. And no, there you are numerous like people. Real stuff, but it's not just bullshit. Right. Calm down, dude. There are numerous people. Like, I'm trying to compliment you guys. You want to let me Who's finish a sentence? I'm not trying to compliment. That's you're trying yes, to insult us. You fuck no, no, I'm not. I swear. I'm yes, saying, you are. There are smart You make claims and you run away from them. No, listen. You made, there a, claim. Like you made a claim. You made a claim. title charge of uh, We can talk about it, but I just want to make my point, man. No, no, no. You, no, no, no. you made your point. You said title charts are wrong. Show me where they are wrong. Just a second. We'll talk about it. No, 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 no. No more points with it. You made this claim. Back it up. Okay. Where is the title chart wrong? Click on it and show me where the numbers are wrong. Where you made observations that are better than those observations. All you have to do is go to the title charts and try to find a tidal wave that has a greater magnitude than that on the side of the moon. Find a tidal wave? Shut up, Paula. What's a it? tidal wave that, that occurs because of a specific event as opposed to something that's occurring naturally day to day, hour to hour? Uh, what kind of event that's is that? That's proof. Your proof is that a tidal wave will be larger than a tide? Well, my actual claim was that the magnitude of uh, the, the tidal tides. charts were wrong. No, you claim I, as you no are. I said I read the title charts, and that's how I know the story doesn't work. Title charts demonstrate that the observations of the moon gravitational effect are accurate. You're claiming they're wrong. Show me where the numbers are wrong. Well, we have greater magnitude waves. No, the, the numbers are wrong, not your bullshit. You just you made admitted a specific that... claim. You made a specific claim. This is about yeah. you, which is you made a Calm claim. Calm down, breathe, man. You made a claim. I love you, man. You I'm made just a claim. Trying to help yeah, you out, you're man. a lying bastard. You made I'm a claim. To help you, dude. Back it up. Back up your claim. Okay. You want to help me prove that you're correct? Show okay. me where the title charts are wrong. Okay. Calm down, man. So, where like, are the title charts wrong? You just admitted that there I didn't were anything. I I told you that you made a claim. You made a claim that the title charts are wrong. Where are they wrong? Okay, I didn't make that claim. My claim yes, was that you the did. You claim. claimed that, that that the title relationship with the moon was inaccurate. Title charts demonstrate uh, that. My so claim. where are the title charts wrong? My claim was that the title charts are accurate, and because I went and looked at them, I realized that they weren't actually consistent with the claim that the moon is the cause of tidal waves. Because we have waves of the same magnitude on the opposite side of the Earth at the same time. But they aren't the same. They're not the same, you idiot. No, they're not the, the same. same. They have different magnitudes. Yeah, well, you said they're the same magnitude, you fuckhead. Right? That's the high, high tide and the low high tide. Right, That's so, a different magnitude. Yeah, well, there are so, so, waves so, so that you don't, are... you, you don't understand them is what the argument really is. Here. No, then your argument needs to be exactly what causes the tidal waves of greater magnitude on the opposite side of the Earth. It isn't tidal moon, waves. you fuckhead. 
Oh, wow. Right. See what that guy just said? See what he just said? He said the moon. He said the moon yeah, causes the, the tidal moon. waves of the same magnitude Not in the, the opposite tide direction. Waves, you idiot, the tide. Of the same magnitude. Of the same magnitude. You fuckhead. Wow. All you guys can do is What causes the tidal wave? Yeah, because you're talking shit, what's it? According you're to your you, model, it is You're not the, backing the up your own frame. It is you guys are interrupting what you do That's all what the I time. Said. You throw mud against the wall and you try and you try to move on from it, but you never back up your claim. I am backing up your claim. According to your model, the cause of the Where are the numbers? Where are the numbers? Show me your numbers. You said you looked at the charts and they were wrong. Where are the charts wrong? Show well, me. They're, they're wrong in the sense they aren't consistent with the, in the claim. Sense that, 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 that you don't understand them. Okay, we got that. They're Good wrong. Enough. They're wrong, as in so they are. You have no data to show where they're wrong. The title for that yeah. guy is. You, you have no data. Wait. Where are hold they wrong? Guys, you got to let Witsit finish his sentence now, or I'm going to have to mute you. Thank you. Yeah, you I'm saying. Panicking. Panicking to high heaven. Calm down. Give him a break. Yeah. I'm saying that the title logs are actually what makes my point because within those exist waves that have the same or greater magnitude as the waves on the opposite side closer to the moon at the same time in the opposite oh, for direction. Fuck's sake, there are no waves. Waves are not associated with tidal uh, with uh with tides. Oh, so there are no, there are no waves within the tides. Waves are not tides. Oh, so there are no waves within the tides? Waves ride on top of the tides. Right. Okay, and so we have the same magnitude of movement on the opposite side of the Earth from the moon at the same time in the opposite direction, correct? So you're talking about tide. Okay, not waves. Good. That's all I wanted to say. Well, <laughs> there's a movement within it. You can call it whatever you want to. A wave is technically transverse movement within a medium, and that's exactly what the tides are. So, at the same time, we have tides, <laughs> which is transverse movement through a medium of water, of the same magnitude in the opposite direction at the same exact time as the, as the tides on the side of the moon. It doesn't work. How do we determine that it doesn't work with it? Because we have tides of the same magnitude in the opposite direction at the same time on the opposite side of the moon. Yeah, but how did you hold, hold the title chart? Tell me where this is, is is true. Are you saying it's not true? Your this is your claim. This is your claim. I'm not chasing it. You chase it. Show me where it's true. I've You're, you you chased this claim. I've chased. Yeah, I've chased it. If every time that I told you a true, a blunt hard truth of your reality that you didn't know, I had to go run away for ten blah, minutes. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so you so you so can't show should, it. All right, yeah, you fair can't enough. Show it's true. If you want to believe that, go ahead. So, well, you haven't showed it true. Okay, true. so it must it must be the Earth must be a ball then, if that's what you want to think. Well, so let's well, get back. To, let's get back to what we were talking about. If you want to look that up for yourself, you'll know the truth. Let's the go to the next slide. Answer. Okay, what's um, the next slide? Yeah, the next slide is what I was trying to say earlier for like 10 minutes. I just want you guys to know that whether you accept it or not, man, you're not as insignificant as they say. There is, you're not just a body that de has cell Nobody degradation. Says we're insignificant, dude. You're saying that. You're not just a body that has cell degradation over time and it ultimately dies. Okay. Talk about low self-esteem. There's something within you that's Holy special. Shit. There's something within you that's special. That's why we can't explain memories or intuition or how the brain works or how the eye. <laughs> okay. And, so, anyways, anyways so, can I take my shot at explaining why the Earth is a sphere? I bet you. Well, as long as I can finish my point. So, the that's point right. is that we're moving towards like this future environment or setting where they're going to clamp on the nihilistic, materialistic worldview they've crafted for many people in the world, so they can fill you with some type of metaphysical reality. And whether you want to accept it or not doesn't matter. I want to know. I got it off my chest, and I said it here. The Father loves you. The Scriptures are real. They lied about it. They lied about the Earth to make Him look stupid. So, accept it or don't accept it, but look into it with humility. Go ahead. What's it? I, do you think all of us are are don't believe in God? I, no, I, no, can no. You be a, can you be a glober and still worship Jesus Christ and God and everything? Sure. Okay then. Yeah, but the father, the father actually showed 
me. Right. The, fa- the father showed me. The father yeah, showed okay. me and called me out to tell people about it because the reason is that many people have gotten the to the truth. The father called you personally. Said, "What's it? I need you to he go called, out on the road." Call, he called me onto the world. Yeah. Oh man, you're well, also, a tired opinion right now. You say you're gonna wait for the other stage, though. Yeah. Well, that's what I sell okay. all my possessions for next to nothing. So, so like, he called me out. It doesn't oh, matter what you, you think. I'm trying to explain. Okay, good one. Dude, you don't hear a voice. That means that you don't have a real experience with the Father. You would know what I'm saying. So he shows you an, an overly oh, yeah. clarifying revelation whenever you actually submit to him, which most people can't do because of pride. But the point is that it is not that you cannot believe or come to the truth of the Father and the Creator without knowing the earth is flat. It's nothing like that. You also can't earn your way with works that's dumb or imperfect. But... It has been used to lead many people astray, including innocent children that had no defense. So he called me out there to at least let know, let me know, or at least let known that they have heard the other side. My, my, what I feel convicted to do is actually not to convert people or anything like that. It's to say the truth in a heartfelt, genuine way. I think will reach that person the best. Each person, I care about each person here, and that's the truth. I care about each person here, dude. I swear, I do. I've looked into okay. what you said is to be true, and to pay, based on my observations, it is not. Okay. Well, as long as you honestly went and examined the truth for yourself, and you went to the Father in prayer, like that's all I can ask for. I, I'm yeah, actually. I didn't, I didn't have to go and pray about it. I went outside and looked at it for myself. Well, yeah, he'll show you the overwhelming pieces of evidence in a sense or state of honesty if you actually ask for the truth to be revealed to you because it doesn't leave you hanging. I used to think this was all a fairy tale. Trust me, I get it. But it's actually not. I mean, take it or leave it. <laughs> I mean, I've physically experienced it. And I, I just, the point here is that many people come to the truth that there is a creator because of like things like the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, like that can't be explained in everything on every scale. But... What's this appeal to faith? Here we go. No, I'm not appealing to faith. The earth is the center well, of everything. What you're saying, that, that, that everything you're doing is an appeal to faith. I didn't say the earth is flat because the Father exists. <laughs> that would be an appeal to faith. Where did the I didn't say that at all. Yeah, Yah, Yahuwah, Yehovah. Yeah, the one true creator, the one the Egyptians wrote about, the one that every other civilization wrote about. <laughs> I did honest research. That's The difference in many people here and I is... Is only one God? I did honest research from beginning to end. The Egyptians I, worshipped a lot more than one God, dude. Yeah, they didn't worship Jehovah. They wrote about him. So they had other gods before him. Yeah, he wasn't was, a god. He wasn't a god. Yeah, he wasn't a god of theirs. He just they just wrote about him. Okay. So anyway, there was a Semitic group of people. You can prove that anthropologically that all left at the same time in a flash. Anthropologically, you can demonstrate this, but the Egyptian writers themselves, they wrote about this group of people that believed in this God that they called Yehovah, and that they claimed that there were going to be certain curses that happened to us, and they happened. They must have been using magic, and there was a drought, and there was a famine, and they didn't eat pork. It must mean that there's power in the vibrations of Yehovah, and that porks make demons come in and mess with your ability. This is what the Egyptians wrote. <laughs> well, the Egyptians never wrote that. That's yes, they literally did write that. So that means that just shows that you don't know what you're talking about. I don't make stuff up. You literally make stuff up, like with okay. the title chart. So what the hell are you talking about? That's all you do is make stuff up. You, I guess you throw point, the wall. Hey, hey, it's, it's, it's up for everyone. I just know there's someone here within the reach of the vibrations coming out of my mouth that may need to hear. The truth is they lied. Religion sucks. Man-made religion sucks. It's stupid. It's dumb. It's been used to kill people, control people. Don't turn to men to figure this out. Go by yourself. Ask the Father to reveal himself to you. The truth is, believe it or not, the scriptures are true from beginning to end, including the description of the earth. That is not why the earth is flat. You can discover and prove the earth is flat if you're being open-minded and finding empirical true. evidence yourself. Okay, let's all, you that find out, all you will find out the the way that you seek the empirical truth is that, in fact, it only ends up verifying dude, and validating There's scripture. a lot of fucked up shit in the scripture, dude. There's a lot of shit in the scripture that's really freaking horrible. Really? Have you have no. you looked at the scripture back in Hebrew and in context, or have you just just Googled? Do you read ancient Bible? Hebrew? That's awesome. Uh, Tom, I'm starting to teach myself Hebrew. How, that's how right. How long have you been studying ancient Hebrew that you can actually read it for yourself? I didn't say I could fully read it by myself. It's only been oh, a couple so, weeks. So, so, so you're reading weeks. somebody else's weeks. translation. Weeks. weeks. It's been a few weeks. I can learn fast, but whatever. <laughs> Do you follow Nathan Thompson's brain training? 
No, I don't claim to fully know exactly everything about. It because I'm a, that's a hard pass for me. But Wait, I don't you use Duolingo. Well, why what? don't you do that? Because it Be- looks like he's grown. He's grown an extra like couple of inches, a couple of shoe sizes, twenty IQ points, and uh, another inch down there, according to him. That's a cool story. Yeah. A lot of IQ points for that. Why don't you trust him? He he has a lot of great findings about science and the shape of the Earth and all that stuff. Why, why don't you trust him? Well, why should we man. trust him just because we're flat Earthers? He's a jerk. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I he didn't stole a lot jerk. of stuff from me. I, I don't typically trust people that steal, but we can move on. Yeah, no time. Why would he do that? Do okay, you know what electromagnetic lake is, Austin? Because Nathan won't answer me. He's a jerk. Uh, well, right, so, why? It seems like you're weirdly obsessed with some dude named Nathan. All right, so, well, like you two were bros. I, I, like, so I, I'm, not, still, I mean, I'm still waiting for for the data from the from the title charts. Oh, we want to know what electromagnetic lake is. Hold on, now? Hey, hold on, everyone. I think it's important. Like oh. everyone seems very charged. Like from the current conversation, I think the conversation itself needs to reset. I feel that. Yeah. All right. So. Okay, so when it's try- when trying to figure out the shape of the Earth, I think it's important that we need to look at some observations that that are clearly able to see with the- within our own uh, within sure. our own grasp. Fine. Okay, so, yeah, b- yeah, basically looking at the environment. So one one key observation that you can make about the about a- whether whether they're trying to figure out the shape of the Earth is whether or not is is depending on whether the sky rotates or not. And so if you look at the sky. It clearly shows that it rotates, right? And if you go up into the so, if we're in, let's say for we're in the northern hemisphere, okay? In the northern hemisphere, if observed correctly, it the sky rotates in a counterclockwise p- rotation. So, well, what, what does this mean in relationship to to the Earth? Well, before we I, well before we actually figure out whether or not the Earth is a f- flat or sphere by demonstrating it first, let's apply. How a sky would rotate on a flat plane versus a, a spherical ball first, so we know what. Okay, what you guys do. Just to so, clarify, real, just to clarify real fast, bro. To say this is not like only on one of the scenarios does the sky rotate. Yeah, and and so uh, so on a flat plane, plane, the way that the the sky would rotate counterclockwise all across the entire plane, no questions asked. But it rotates a, over top of the plane, yeah. But on a spherical Earth, in the, if, if in the northern hemisphere, or rather a spherical object, rather, it would in the, on the top part of this of the of the sphere, it would rotate counterclockwise. But on the opposite side of the sphere, it would rotate clockwise. And in the center, it would rotate in one consistent direction in conjunction with both with both uh, rotations. So we already yeah. know what the rotation of the Earth is in the northern hemisphere, that being counterclockwise. And so all we have to do to figure out if it's a, if it's a flat plane or a sphere is to just travel down south and observe the sky. And when you observe the sky down the south, you, you see that it rotates in a clockwise position. And Does you it? Double check the work, and double check the work of the, whether or not if this is true or not, you can travel um, to the midpoint, such as uh, somewhere in the middle of Africa. And from there, you can observe that the sky rotates in conjunction with both the northern hemisphere being counterclockwise and the southern hemisphere being clockwise. By turning your camera north after you observe south. Uh, specific, no, just turning your camera upwards and observing the sky. Well, how do you compare it to the north rotation? Well, well, the reason why is well, the reason why is because it has in both in all three scenarios, you're pointing your camera up towards the sky to observe which direction it moves in. Right. So in different locations, you're looking at the sky, and then you're going to stitch them together, or what? So, well, like, well, like I have. said, well, 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 like I said, that how you, science you, works? You make observations. Well, Calm well down. like I said, well, like I said earlier, in which we, if you apply the same thing to a sphere, if you if you have if the sky rotates depending on the position it's in, it's going to do different things. So, like I said earlier, we we know that the observ- we know that the the sky in the northern hemisphere rotates counterclockwise. Huh. If you apply the lo- if you apply the logic that it rotates counterclockwise on a sphere, right. yeah, it, it moves. It's on the northern part. It's counterclockwise on the bottom uh-huh. part. It's clockwise. Can I respond? And, and it, 
and I'm just look. Allow me to finish the thing I'm saying. Good, well. good. And then on the, the center of it, it rotates in conjunction with both direct with both uh, rotations. Okay. All right. Okay. So according to the globe Earth model, every single star in the sky moves east to west, and we have the perception of clockwise and counterclockwise relative to our location. The truth is that er according to the globe model, every single star in the sky is moving the same direction. East to west. I'm not talking about stars. I'm talking about how the sky works. You're talking about the stars in the sky, dude. I'm, talk I'm talking about how the sky rotates. Yeah, well, your your model rotate. claims your mo model claims the sky doesn't rotate, but the Earth in fact rotates and looks like makes it the stars look like they're spinning. Wait, so, if, uh, if what you say is true, wait, wait. If what you say is true, I address what the guy said. If what you say is true. If all of the star move east to west, how do you see rotation? According to your model, every single star no, no, in the how sky. How do you see rotation? I ask. If all move in the same direction. How does well, that's what your model claims. Rotation. Sounds like no, it sounds like a no, you no, question. No, no, it doesn't. Well, well wait, time on. out, time hold out. On, Take it. I, I think one thing is important to state. I didn't actually specifically state in any sort of model whatsoever. It's just an observation Fair enough. and three points. Yeah, and it, and it does this. I, I agree with your observation. Hey, hey, Alex, Alex, I agree with your observation. Okay. I agree that there appears to be clockwise and counterclockwise movement, but like we all know that every star actually moves east to west. It's just like if you hang a six on your sill and you walk the other side, it'll look like a nine. Because based on perception, it will actually change what you see. According to the globe Earth model, every single star, which is how we detect motion in the sky, that's what we're looking at, is the star trails, literally. That's what you're talking about right now. You're talking about star trails. When you look at star trails in the sky, right, they Every star moves east to west, and no. according to the glo according to the globe model, every Dude. single star moves east to west. But there's Dude. a clockwise and counterclockwise perception that happens due to axial rotation. Well, Dude, how do they well, all move east to west and you see the rotation? I don't get well, it. Don't well, ask the your point. model that, so, dude, because that's what so, your model so, says. So, so, okay, some so. two things needs to to go in different ways. Otherwise, there is no rotation. Your so, model claims that they all go east to west, though. Okay, so one thing that I think is important to that, in order to understand this and how it works, is that let's actually apply this back to like an actual sphere so we can understand it. Let's take a um, let's take like a basketball for example, or or, some, or a soccer ball. For Bro, example. why are you looking at the sky, which you don't understand? You don't know what the nature of it is. You've never been up there to verify what the lights are. Why are you looking at the sky when you can just look at the fucking horizon and know that it's flat? Well, and observe it to be flat. Well, well, the the reason why is because if you have an object in the sky in, in on, on an object and it rotates in a specific way, but it rotates in a different way, uh, in a different way in another location you would you would want to observe that and create a model based around that you don't know what the sky is you're going in there half cocked man it's an argument from ignorance from the get-go well hold why on. is it an you argument from, from, from ignorance to be flat you could observe that the, the earth is well, moving you observe the stuff well, in the sky moving the reason well if you well if you actually well for me specifically the reason why i'm, I'm sort of saying towards the sky is because since nobody since usually when it comes down to flat earth discussions it usually boils down to curvature and since nobody can actually and since one side disagrees with it and uh, side disagrees with you it, can't answer it's it parallax. No, Listen, no it's parallax no because you can't okay point. i feel you yeah allow, fair me, enough. allow me to allow me to make the point i'm making uh, i don't I, i'm not talking about who's right and who's wrong right now okay you're talking about you're how talking we can't actually measure I'll the earth curvature okay. can you allow me to finish my point please feel distinctly do it sure yeah the reason, so because no one either side cannot agree on what it is, I don't think it's productive because you keep on going back and forth, shouting and shouting. So Fair rather enough. than look at, so then rather than look at that observation, which no one can agree on, we should look towards a different one that is much more easily visible to us. Okay, now fair enough. I hear what you're saying, but his point is that well, the most efficient way 
is to actually test the surface of the Earth itself, because if it is in fact a globe Earth with a radius of 3959 circumference of 24,901, it has to bend at a certain rate. So the most efficient way, objectively, not debatably in any way, to test the surface of the Earth is to see if it is in fact curving at said rate. Now you're saying, no, we don't agree on that, because now globe Earth in 2021 has to say, well, that's not the curvature of the Earth, i.e. the geometric horizon. You never actually that's see the right. curvature of the Earth. It's refraction. Uh, and all you ever I'm see sorry. is a parallel location. So now we look at the sky and we make up stories. I just now sent two higher education links from your side explaining that every single star moves east to west. So every single star oh. moves east to west, the fact that they perceive to move clockwise and counterclockwise relative to your location is also something that happens on the globe Earth. To pretend that it's exclusive to a flat Earth, not being able to answer it, no, it's just perception. It's the same answer for both models. That well, falls in the both can baskets. I, can I say, can well, I say well, something? Can I say, well, can I, can I, can I, well, hold on. Can I say something? Can I tell, like a mag well, you know what a ma uh, uh, neodymium uh, magnet is, right? You know the electrons on neodymium magnet? It's like a parallax from the Earth and the South. The south moves counterclockwise in the north. With the north on a deal mini, it moves co clockwise, counterclockwise, and the south moves clockwise. The electromagnetic field. Same way, it's a flat okay. magnet. So, Did one thing. To okay. Is he there? I don't think he's there. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, so, okay, so going back to what I was uh, saying earlier, uh, and, I, and before I was really interrupted explaining about the sky. If, you, if we actually apply the idea that the sky ro uh, the stars move east to west east to west and the sky rotates counterclockwise in the north and clockwise in the south, we should actually we should actually attempt to apply this onto an actual sphere itself. So if we rotate the and we should also apply this to a flat plane as well to, to give both sides the benefit of the doubt. If we take a sphere and we rotate it, you know, with with all the information we that we know that the you know, it actually makes sense on the spherical Earth. The problem I have with the problem with uh, the the flat plane idea is that it would this in the northern part it would rotate counterclockwise, in the southern part it rotate clockwise, but in the middle it would do it. But the problem is, is that it doesn't make any sense in that if the sky is able to do two different things at different times simply because two people are looking at a different way. Especially when you're able That's to That's how point, it works. Especially when you point especially when you're able to see different stars at different points in the sky oh. that the other people are not able to see. Look, if you have a vortex, a whirlpool of water in the middle of a living room, and you stand on the opposite sides of it, they will look like they're moving other ways. If you look at a six on the ceiling and you walk across the room and look like a nine. This is just a simple law of perspective. This is what happens whenever, based on your yeah. angle of perspective. Yeah, literally, yeah. objectively, you can do both the things I just said. I know. Hold on. Well, Let, well, the, uh, difference, well the difference here is that in way, and I don't think it's, and the reason why I don't think it's comparable is that, is that you're looking, is that in the two, th all three positions, we're all looking up, and we're all getting three different results at the same time. But that you duplicated it right here with a hemisphere, glass dome, cupola, and a bunch of concentric circles, which represent the star trails. You have a trail toward the north, which would be toward the center, and a trail toward the south, where you have two different rings, which could give you your southern and uh, northern uh, uh, trails or whatever. Well, and that so glass dome is upside down. The glass dome. But the... Well, the problem with now. well, the problem with the so the problem with the glass dome model is that uh, well, that well, is that well, if you actually think about that and apply it to an actual flat plane, and you would have to understand that in the set is that the flat is that it actually wouldn't work be work correctly because because it would be rotating in this really weird way and it just stops at two certain it's points in the sky. It's duplicatable. So you're talking about a ball that's duplicatable. Well, this is duplicatable. And also your ball isn't quite as duplicatable as you say, because if you're in a train, you only see the scenery going the opposite direction in one way. You don't see the sky bowing up and down with one motion. That's two motions with the sky sky bowing upward and downward to give us these star trails. The only way the sky can do that is if it's solid. Only a solid object would give you bowing up and down. Otherwise, the only motion that you would see is opposite to the spin in one direction, not two. So the sky has to have solidity to bow up and down that way. That's the only way it could work. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Your well, model claims that's perception also. That's well, not exclusive again, to one model. Well, I'm going to get out of here. I love you guys. Well, 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 one thing... Well, bef well before he actually did did that and before and allow me to actually respond he keeps saying that it's my model i never actually presented any sort of model whatsoever so i don't know why he keeps saying that
I, I think that I think that's I think I think that's just um, I don't I don't know if he has like it's normally he normally does that because it's globe um, and the globe implies that the only thing that's blocking what's beyond is a hump of earth curvature when it could be something optical uh, refraction limit or the refraction limit representation and well, he knows it a lot of flat earthers know it that's not the entire story of course well, they're going to get well, it wrong every it, time well I want parallax well, so can you demonstrate that so going so. Let's continue this uh, dome earth, uh, pers the, the personal dome atmosphere idea. The problem with the personal dome atmosphere idea is that if you, is that if, is mainly in that w it doesn't make sense in relationship to, to Reality. other people's locations. No. So le let's, so let's, I'm assuming, we, let's actually assume that it's the disc. And like I said, I'm sorry if I keep stuttering, I have a speech impediment. Let's actually go to the center of this, okay? Well, guys, for them. Yeah. If you go to the center of it, it, it you can actually see that that it would that it wouldn't make sense for that to happen because that I, I'm so hard. So it's so hard to actually describe this because it's, it usually ends this far. So the reason why is because you're not actually able to replicate this on a flat earth. And we'll, if you actually apply it to a flat plane uh, versus a circle. circles on the paper. You can do it either way. You could do it being um, on the other side of that glass dome cupola, or you could reverse things by being under the flat glass dome cupola that is holding in its right hand. Uh, with a curved atmosphere overhead, with the star circling over that glass cupola. Either way, you're going to get a similar. Right effect. Now, then I'll well, the protect glass dome is upside if we're down. About reproducing okay. stuff. This is why they don't do it like that, ball. Lemon, because you can't. They have to show the some bullshit. And again, and again, with this, this whole again with the personal dome. And the other thing that's wrong with the personal dome idea is that two people. You're going to get two completely different results, even though people may be looking in the same direction, i.e. being the North Pole in this case. You have to wait for the circle of stars to circle around to where you are. You see those concentric circles? That's the stars circling overhead. Uh, yeah, circle. I, yeah, for but, the circle overhead, and locally you will see... But you're going to get different results depending on where you are on a flat on the f so let, let's take a straight line and j and, j and j draw one straight down it you're going to be getting a different person idea of, of a personal dome on the flat earth even though if you even though when you take this idea of the sky rotating on the flat earth it's going to rotate completely the same all across so it doesn't make sense on a, on the flat earth yes it's going to rotate all the way across the flat plane and in your local rules uh with your local perspective you're going to see a local light show like that glass dome cupola based off of the oh. of your vision in all directions which will make a dome of vision so the same phenomena still applies but the, but the problem is that, but the problem is but the problem is that the dome doesn't but the problem is if you have a dome Worth mentioning the south and solar yeah. circles don't move through through the yeah, night. We have well, we're, not, well, we're, 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 we're not we're not well I'm not talking about the the, the south celestial pole. I'm, I'm I'm just talking about like I'm just pointing to a specific direction. I'm not so And the evidence of a dome Yeah. Yep, that's the whole point is if it's gonna be explained by a dome that has to be over your head or in particular time at night, that dome can't be moving for that observer. If it were the moving, stars. the south if it were moving, the south celestial pole would move. It doesn't. The, uh, look, the central, the concentric circles are the stars circling overhead. The way that you view them through your personal dome, be it a dome of vision and or there a glass no dome, from, dome, is what there you have see to be billions that of personal domes. There is no foundation yeah. for a personal um, dome in I, science. Yeah. There's no uh, foundation for this. In all directions, that would effectively be a dome. You would see up to a no, point it in no, all no. directions, and that would effectively give you a dome. No. Billions of domes. Works. It's refraction. Okay? I knew you were talking about that Refraction bullshit. is making you see it as a second. All the personal domes in the north rotate one way, all the personal domes in the south oh, rotate another way. Percent, there's yeah. no yeah. mechanism your refraction why, will why do. Why does it prove me wrong? 
Well, no mechanism for which refraction can do what you need this to do. Why do you need Again, there's no mechanism for light to bend in the way that you need it to for this to work. Too bad. Who and said, also, the stars are still said, circling east to west. It's Lemon, just locally, it looks well, different. That's all. I asked the question, Lemon, why you make a special case for the south? How do you know? Because it's dealing with star trails that are wider and going over a bigger yes, area. They look the same. Same at the south as they are at the north. Same trails, same circles. But this so the personal dome system. thing shows how the uh, trails would appear to reverse both how do you south from... by looking through a dome of uh, personal atmosphere and or a glass so dome firmament. That can distinguish which is the dome and which is real. You can't. Everything's apparent. Unless you go up you there. Can. And Therefore, verify it. You can't. I can throw it away because. But you guys are never going to go because up there. Because the south may be, may be the real north and the north is the south. Right? Maybe. But we'll never know. Because uh, maybe. So, we're not going to go up there. We haven't go. been up there. Go. You guys no. you know, lie this, when you say uh, that we've been up there. So we're, we're just not, we are we're not gonna right now. We are well, there right now. You this wish. from the gang. Yes, yes, we are there right now. This well, personal well, dome thing demonstrates what's seen. Lemon. If they reversed, then you wouldn't be implying that they were the same stars. We don't see any evidence that they're the same stars. They are different stars. They all move in lockstep. There's no in a yeah. dome situation, you would expect to see at the halfway point. You would expect to see a wonky zone where it was out of focus and not moving in lockstep with the rest of the stars. So we don't not see the true. same stars. It's not moving in lockstep. So you have a argument that has no merits. This the, shows visually what we see. The, the other, the other the problem that they always ignore is the fact that if we look at the relationship between uh, the distances between the stars, right? Like if we're looking at the arc minutes between the stars, they're the they're the same everywhere on the Earth, whereas on the flat Earth, at times, you would be getting closer and further away from these constellations, right? So the constellations would change shape, just the way that if you, that if you draw, like, you know, dots on the ceiling, the shape is going to change depending on where you're standing. We don't you're say. absolutely right. The constellations changing shape is a flat Earth proof, because if these stars <laughs> were balls of gas traveling in millions of light years, different directions, all this other bullshit then we would have changing constellations if it was well, actually the heliocentric model. We do. Model. We do. You're an idiot, no, we don't. Fred. You don't we even do. know. <laughs> like do you know how slow they, they move in comparison to their distance? How is that know. change going to be visible? Moving in different directions and stuff like that, you would have over thousands yes. of years. It, and that's all, all accounted new for. Constellations, the, the yes, farther new constellations, the farther constellations went away. Over we'd have new, closer constellations. Over thousands of years. Everything you're saying is true. It all happens. And it happens slowly. It, right? Because just we yeah, need it happens slowly. Well, all